Hi, so in the previous video we looked at deriving the golden rule steady state level and talked about how policymakers need to adjust the savings rate in order to transition to the golden rule steady state. In this video I'm going to talk a bit more about this transition. So for example, let's assume we've reached a random steady state, we'll call that K star, and we're at a K star which is greater than the golden rule steady state. So we're in steady state but we want to ideally be at the golden rule steady state which maximizes consumption and thus maximizes economic well-being because we get utility from consumption. But clearly we have too much capital per capita in our K star that we're currently at so you want to decrease this to move to K star gold. How do we do this? We So we will increase our consumption by decreasing the savings rate this will thus reduce our level of investment and so our level of capital per capita will decrease. So by decreasing the savings rate in the short run we increase consumption because people are consuming more of their income and in the future also we are moving to the golden rule steady state so we also have higher consumption in the future. Uh, so, by so let's look at this diagram to understand this a bit better. So we have output per capita, consumption per capita, and investment per capita on the y-axis, and we're just looking at how these variables evolve over time on the x-axis. So we're initially at this steady state k star, and so our variables on the y-axis are all constant, as you can see by these horizontal lines. But at time t0, so let's imagine we implement a policy that reduces the savings rate. So, as I said, this will immediately increase consumption. And so we have a shock to consumption, and then it sort of tails away until it reaches the new steady state, which has got higher consumption than the initial steady state, uh, simply because we're, we're moving to the golden rule steady state, which is the highest possible consumption. So it must be higher than our initial steady state. Uh, so the initial steady state level is shown on this dotted line and clearly you can see that we're now at a higher level of consumption than we were before. Uh, however, reducing the savings rate will reduce investment, so we have a negative shock to investment and we sort of transition to a new steady state here. And as we, we have this identity y equals consumption plus investment, our uh, output per capita does decline slightly. So it looks something like this, and we reach our new steady state levels uh, in, in the long run, given by these, these new changed lines. What do we notice here is that consumption is our end goal, because we get utility from consumption, and at every point in time, uh, the new level of consumption is above our original level of consumption. We're always above this dotted line from now on. What does this mean? So if this means that if K star is greater than K star gold, we are dynamically inefficient. Dynamically inefficient. This means that by decreasing the savings rate, we can increase consumption at every point in time. So it just it makes sense for the policymaker to do this because in the short term we have higher consumption and in the long term we also have higher consumption so if we are higher than the golden rule steady state we're dynamically inefficient uh, we shouldn't be there because it makes sense in every time period to decrease the savings rate and thus increase consumption in every period we can be better off at all points in time so we're inefficient dynamically so now let's consider the other case we want to transition uh, to the golden rule steady state, but we're transitioning from now a K star, which is less than the golden rule steady state. So we have lower capital per capita in our steady state than we want to have in our golden rule so that we can maximize consumption in the long run. So how do we increase our capital per capita to get to this golden rule? Well, quite simple, we increase the savings rate. So we want to increase investment, which increases our capital per capita. 
So what does increasing the savings rate do? In the short term, this means that we're spending a higher fraction of our income on savings. So this decreases consumption in the short run. But as we know, in the long run, we'll be maximizing our consumption because we're at the golden rule steady state. And that is exactly what the golden rule steady state is. So if we now look at our graphs again of all these variables, but this time we're moving from a low K star, such that we're increasing saving now instead of decreasing it, our consumption initially falls in the short run, and then we transition to steady state above our dotted line. So in the long run, consumption does increase, but in the short run, it falls. So that's the difference here. And again, I haven't drawn these graphs amazingly, but we have investment increasing at all points in time because we've increased the savings rate, so we're investing more at all points in time. And so if we do the sum of these two curves, y equals c plus i, our output in the long run will maybe look something like this. So output per capita is always higher in every point of time. Investment per capita is higher in every point of time. But consumption now is not higher. We have a decrease in consumption in the short run. This curve is below our original dotted line in the short run, but we move above it in the long run. So this economy is initially dynamically efficient. The previous one was dynamically inefficient. This one is efficient. Why is that? Because we can only increase consumption in the long run by decreasing consumption in the short run. So this means that we have a trade-off between the short run and the long run. And so we can say we are still dynamically efficient because this depends how we weight present consumption against future consumption, whether we want to do this, whether we do actually want to move to the golden rule steady state. Arguments can be made that consumption today is more valuable than consumption in the future, although that's a topic for a different video as to why those arguments are the case. But what we can't argue about is there is some trade-off. We are seeing, would we... Are we willing to give up consumption today in order to maximize consumption in the long run? So this economy is dynamically efficient. There is an argument for not increasing the savings rate here. However, in the previous economy, where K star was greater than the golden rule K star, there is no, there's no excuse for it. We should be decreasing the savings rate in that economy because that will make everyone better off in every time period. So that just about does it for this video on the transition to the golden rule steady state. In the next video, we'll be looking at absolute and relative convergence in the solo model. So check out the playlist for the rest of those and subscribe so that you can get my future videos. And if this video was at all useful, drop a like rating. That would be much appreciated.